All right, so we got some new products. Um, if you haven't already, get an Ada box because you'll get it. It's like the last day you can do you'll it. You'll get it like, you know, next week or so. So yeah. adabox.com, easy way to remember. Just go there, sign up, get a subscription. Um, a lot of folks that were very nice and didn't say what it is. They just said they really like it. So Aww. very nice of them. And very Halloween themed. All right, so um, Raspberry Pi announced a bunch of stuff. These are all coming soon. Sign up. As soon as we get them, you get an email. And then you get them first. Yes. So that's the best thing to do is sign up. Okay. So the compute module, this is really neat because uh, for a while there's been Raspberry Pi compute modules that were SIM-based um, and they would like snap in. Um, now they're much like more like rectangular, squarish, and uh, they've been upgraded to the Raspberry Pi 4. So they're like super powerful and they have um, a bunch of different variants. Uh, sorry. So let's go here. Uh, so let's talk about the variants. So um, the core is going to be the same. You still get a Raspberry Pi 4 chip. The power supply and the pinout is the same. But you can get it with or without Wi-Fi. Um, it's like basically like five bucks more if you want the Wi-Fi edition. Um, and you can get it with a variable, a, a different range of RAM, starting from like one gigabyte up to eight gigabytes of RAM. And you can get it with or without EMCC, so it's onboard memory, so you don't need a separate SD card. Uh, EMCC is also um, pretty. EMMC is also uh, pretty fast. Um, I don't don't have speed checks, but I would guess it's faster than SD card. Um, you can get it in a range of like I think from eight up to like 64 gigabytes or something. Um, right now we have the coming soon just for the light, which is the least expensive version. Um, it's kind of like the A plus, the Raspberry Pi A plus of the Pi Four. Uh, without Wi-Fi and without MMC. Um, however, we will carry a wide range of them. We're basically seeing which ones we can get. So, you know, the ones that we put in the store are the ones that we can carry. Um, but it's neat. You know, there's even an external um, Wi-Fi connector option. There's a Wi-Fi switch. So you could use the internal um, onboard PCB antenna, or you can connect an external Wi-Fi antenna. Yeah, so here's some of the other... And this is the accessory board. So this is the I.O. board for the Raspberry Pi. So this is kind of like everything you could possibly do with it. So if you're like a developer, because a lot of people are buying these boards for industrial usage, although I think there's some maker projects that could benefit from it as well. Um, you can basically choose like how many HDMI ports, how many USB ports. Do you want Ethernet? Do you not want Ethernet? Do you want like, looks like there's a real time clock on there. Um, there's two uh, MIPI connectors, two camera connectors. So you can do like stereo vision. It's like pretty cool stuff. So this camera IO board, um, you know, you have like a Pi Hat connector. Uh, this is everything you can add in. And you can see that the two uh, Hiroshi connectors that you snap on. So it's a new form factor for the Raspberry Pi compute module. But I think it's a winner because there's a lot of pins and they're high speed. Um, so you'll be able to do, you know, like you want to pass those HDMI connections over there. Not a problem. MIPI, not a problem. CSI, not a problem. Um, high speed GPIO, also not a problem. So the cost, the size. I think this is going to be really popular. Um, I want to make some accessories for this too. I think this could be a great yeah. little add-on, like a, like a super hyper feather type thing. Uh, there's also a Wi-Fi antenna kit for, again, you don't need the Wi-Fi antenna um, for the uh, uh, compute module, but if you are putting it in an enclosure, especially a metal enclosure, you're going to want this antenna because uh, first off, it's outside, it'll get you better range. Um, also, it's a certified with this antenna, and it's only like five bucks or so. And you get the UFL connector and the antenna. What a deal. Um, so then we have, uh, yeah, there's an image showing how the antenna connects, and then um, this is the UFL. So you can see that little chip next to the UFL. That's the antenna switch. So it automatically detects when a UFL uh, Wi-Fi antenna is attached. It'll switch over. Very handy. Um, this is the connector on the uh, module. Um, I'll find the part number, we'll post it up on the, the product page, but it's basically, I think, like, looks like it's 80 pins, and there's two of them. So um, they sit nice and flat. Also, it might be a little bit of the Portena, same sort of, sort of thing. So coming soon, sign up, and we'll notify you as soon as we get them. It's, I don't know that there are going to be a lot of them available before the end of the year, um, but uh, definitely in 2021, you'll be able to get bulk quantities of these. Okay, well, um, speaking of 2021, which we'll eventually get to, we're stuck in 20. 20. And That's that right. means for the holidays or for now or just as a gift or buy it for yourself, we have PPE packs. So we have basic packs. We have uh, packs with even more. Yeah. So we have uh, this one. This comes with Yeah, masks. it comes with a face shield. It comes with a no touchy. It comes with a filtration mask. It comes with ear savers, which are really handy. It comes with disposal masks. It comes with a, um, a 
Fahrenheit thermometer. We also have ones with like fabric masks. Yeah. We have like basically three kits, and they're like thirty bucks, fifty bucks, and about a yeah, hundred. This one bucks. has more stuff in it. Yeah. Comes so you get more, different things. more, more, and you can share them with family yeah. or just for yourself. So you know, give the gift of not getting infected. Yay! All right, next up. Okay, next up. Uh, these are cool. So we, we've been carrying this material in like tape strips. Um, and now we have it in sheets. Uh, some people emailed us and said, hey, can you carry this material in sheet format? And I said, yeah, sure. Uh, this is conductive uh, metallic nylon. Um, so you can't solder to it, but you can sew to it and you can cut it very easily as well. So for example, I've got here uh, Circuit Playground Express and um, there's all these pads and these are capacitive touch pads. And um, this is just a piece of the uh, material and I, I made it into a heart and then I just little Powerpuff Girl. Um, I taped it onto um, the uh, capacitive touch contact. And when I plug it in, when I touch, it basically acts as a gigantic capacitive touch pad. So um, it's great for, you know, if you want to pass power or signal, um, great for capacitive touch as well because it's uh, the conductive glue on the bottom it means that you can just like glue it onto the thing and then you just extend uh, the conductivity. Um, you don't have to use it with the paper backing off, but like, you know, you can move the paper backing and stick it onto something and it's, it's flexible and compared to copper tape, it doesn't crack, which I really like. Yeah. And again, you can sew to it, you can cut to it. Um, feels pretty good to the hand. It looks pretty cool. It's got like a silvery finish to it. You get, uh, three packs of 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter. Okay. And, uh, tonight we're going to do something a little bit different. We have... Uh, a coming soon ish, and also two stars of show, so kind of three altogether because this is a big yeah. deal. This is the new Metro ESP thirty two S two Express. Okay, this was coming soon a couple weeks ago, but it's now like coming sooner because it, we're actually we made a bunch, and yeah. now now we're going through testing. Uh, we didn't get them in before the show because uh, I have to fix the tester, but uh, they're still uh, we photos, so you can check it out. ESP thirty two S two Express Metro. Um, has the latest ESP chip on it. It's Wi-Fi capable, but it's also got native USB, so you can run CircuitPython or Arduino. It also has built-in uh, battery charging capability. You want to you zoom in? Okay, so close. So close. Right, back, up, back it up. Back it up. Okay, good. Um, it's got the Arduino Uno pinouts. Uh, it's got a LiPo battery input and battery charging circuitry. It's got a uh, boot zero pin, a reset. USB-C, people are like, we want USB-C. Well, we're finally there. Uh, Stem QT I2C connector. You can also use it with um, quick connect uh, sensors and devices. DC input and on-off switch so you can turn off the, the Wi-Fi chipset. Uh, optional debug port, um, both a UART debug and also a JTAG debug if you'd like that. A little NeoPixel on there. Uh, SPI on the analog and uh, GPIO pins that your heart can stomach, so your stomach and heart. So coming soon, sign up. Uh, we'll almost certainly have them later this week or next week. All right, we got some e-ink displays. Yeah, this is a new e-ink. This is a grayscale e-ink, which is cool. So shown here, this is a, a picture of Phil. This is a picture of Adabot. And um, what's interesting about this display is, um, yeah, it can do partial updates, but it can also do grayscale um, by kind of packing the display uh, lookup table this is, you know, it's officially sanctioned way to do it. You can turn what is normally a monochrome display to uh, show uh, four layers, four levels of uh, darkness. So, like the white background color, the light gray, uh, dark gray, and then um, black. So you can also use it in monochrome mode. But the fact that it's grayscale, I think, is pretty cool, and it's available as a feather wing. So uh, you just plug in any feather you like. It comes with three buttons, so that's kind of nice. You can make little user interfaces. Uh, it has an SD card, it has a reset button. Uh, it has built-in SRAM, so uh, even if you're using something as simple as a Feather 32U4 or a Feather 328, you don't have enough RAM for the entire display, that's okay. The onboard SRAM acts as a buffer for you. Um, and uh, it's part of our Think Ink series. So this is a 2.9 inch uh, EPD display. It's about like 300 by 130 pixels. Um, and uh, guide coming soon, but uh, this is a pretty cool display. I like it. I like the grayscale. All right. And continuing on with the stars of the show, besides our community, besides you, Lady, besides our employees, besides our community is 
the voice bonnet. So this is a um, new bonnet kind of based off of our BrainCraft series. So we talked, showed you the, the BrainCraft hat and um, the voice uh, control project and like, you know, vision projects. Well, if you're only doing voice projects or you're just doing audio projects in general, uh, what's nice about this bonnet is it works with any Raspberry Pi with a 2x20 connector. It has a WM8960 codec, which has dual analog input. So you have a left mic and a right mic. And it's got stereo outputs. There's headphone stereo. Um, you can plug in line out or headphones if you don't want to have speakers. And uh, we also have two speaker ports. Each one is one watt. You can put one speaker or two speakers. Up to you. Stereo if you want, mono if you don't. And um, we added a couple extras as well. So um, on the very left, you see a button. So that uh, can be used, we'll show the demo, with um, voice control projects when you want to tell it to start listening or you want to like activate it. Um, to the right of that, there's an on-off switch. So that turns on and off the codec itself. So if you want to make sure that there's no way that the bonnet can be listening in on you, like you, t you physically are turning off the microphones, like there's no way for microphone to be listening to you, um, use the off switch. So that's a new feature in a lot of um, voice control or voice assistant. We've been trying products. to get everyone to do it for 10 years and some companies are. Yeah, and we're, we are adding it as well, but we were first. Uh, there's also three dot star LEDs, so you can set them to various colors. That's a good way to have a basic visual feedback when you're doing audio projects, like if something's running or not. Um, you see there's the headphone jack and then um, there's a stem IQT connector for connecting I squared C sensors or devices. Uh, there's also one Stemma JST 3-pin connector on GPIO 12, so you can connect the servo or relay or NeoPixels. Um, all those work with uh, the voice bonnet as well. And so I thought I'd show a little demo that I put together. So this is uh, yeah. on a Pi 4. Yeah, let's zoom in so you can see the text on the screen. Too. Well, I have to show the, the LEDs, so yeah. I don't, I don't want to hide. And this is, this is fine. You like that? Okay, yeah, I'll do that. This is fine. I can always put this over here. Um, so in this demo, I've uh, taken the Google Voice Assistant, which is a free uh, Python program you can run on a Raspberry Pi, and it will basically act as a, as a Google Assistant. Um, but I've updated it to take advantage of all the cool hardware. Like, for example, um, it uses the OLED display to tell you uh, it's ready for a new request. Um, to work to, it also is red telling you, like, okay, it's, it's waiting for a new request. To make a new request, you have to press the button. Hey, Google, what time is it? And then it's now 7 p.m. Thank you. It'll print out what the uh, Google Assistant thinks you said, and then it'll speak the answer. Hey, Google, what's the capital of Alaska? Juno is the capital of Alaska. Very good. See if it knows us. Okay. Hey, Google, what's an Adafruit? According to Wikipedia, Adafruit Industries is an open source hardware company based in New York City. It was founded by Limmer Fried in 2005. The company designs, manufactures, and sells a number of electronics products, electronics components, tools, and accessories. Mostly true. That's pretty right. good job. So this just shows you like what's neat is not only am I writing the script, but it was really easy to update the Python code to use CircuitPython so I could have a display, to have buttons, um, to have these uh, RGB LEDs give you feedback. So I think for projects with voice recognition or audio playback where you know, we have the really cool Pimeroni uh, Pirate Audio series that have display, um, but if you need a microphone input and um, if you don't need a display, I think this is an excellent um, add-on to any Raspberry Pi computer. Uh, I can use it from a zero up to a Pi 4 and beyond. That's new, that's new products. New, 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 new.